and do not reflect the views of the creators, hosts, or that of Cryer Media or their partners. The show may cover sensitive topics and information and discuss triggering issues. Listener discretion Why do is I advised. Love that thing so much? <laughs> Tells everybody there's a storm brewing. Is that why? <laughs> Disclaimers. He doesn't need the odd disclaimer. And you know what we need a disclaimer for today, too? Uh, this shirt, apparently. You just decided to put this up to start the podcast. Thank you very much. That's nice. I can't help it. I'm just a middle aged snack. Have I said that before? Yes, I have. Because I am. And we're selling those shirts at the Dean Blundell show. Does it suck being a uh, 50 year old snack? Basic supermodel? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Nice. Hey, buddy. You are not feeling well. I got the vid. No, you don't. Nostril you banged myself twice today. It's the only sickness that you have to nostril F yourself for. Like, and I was like, two o'clock in the morning, woke up, couldn't couldn't breathe. You can hear me. You I'm, knew you I'm were getting unwell. sick last night when we were yeah, chatting. Yeah, yeah, we were yeah. I wasn't feeling great. Yeah. So anyway, I woke up. I was sick this morning, four o'clock, went downstairs. Just because like we're fucking trained to do this. And did the old swab test, put it in the thing. Nothing. I'm still out of it. It's like two, three o'clock in the morning and go back to bed. Can't sleep. Get up. Check my results. I'm like, this is not COVID. No COVID. And then I do another no. one. It's not COVID. No COVID. I did it at like four o'clock in the morning. Maybe you have measles. And then I realized something. I don't even give a shit. Like, <laughs> what are we doing testing for this stuff anymore? Honest to God, there's like 8,000 illnesses going around. We're in like cold and flu season. We still, we, of the we year. still have the tests. Yeah, but like, how long do they last? Ebola. I don't know. I don't know. It's, just, it's not a bull. But like, I got, I got three shots. I'm not getting another one. I, I have no desire to talk about it either. But then I started thinking maybe we should talk about it today because like only the people that want, that want to continue to fight with others are like talking about it. Cause I, literally, Phone call this morning, business call. My friend, he's like, you sound sick. And I'm like, yeah, I don't feel great. On to the business. And he's like, is it COVID? And I'm like, are you serious? No one ever asks me that anymore. I don't get that. No one asks me that. Like, what does it matter? Yeah. Anyway, found that interesting. I never got it. Not once. My mind is still in this like, ooh. And then, you know, we all know what COVID is now. And I'm like, yeah, it's a flu. It's cold. Well, it, it. I know a lot of people with long-term issues are going to say, no, it's not. Anyway, it, yeah. I'm fine. I'm good. I'm it excited did, for the program. It did kill some people, too. So Yeah, it totally did. 100% it, did. It may not, for those that are healthy, it may not have had the same. Yeah. You know what it We're is? Not, too- no, let's just get the guests on. Let's <laughs> stop. You're sick. I got a cold. You're a big boob. I got a twenty. Easy. I got a twenty fourth. I got a twenty first century cold. That's what we're going to start calling it. Well, you got a twenty first century cold. Good for you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> anyway, good to be here. Lachlan Cross is here. We got a few things to get to today, uh, including conjoined twins. Really excited for that phone call. Uh, that that phone conversation that we're going to have a little later on this morning. However, Lachlan Cross, um, we've been meeting some of your friends. One of your friends that you brought over from the locker room, Stacy Disatel, Ardent Roof Systems. Could be one of the nicest guys on the planet. Like I've never met a nicer dude. Has an annual golf tournament, a charity golf tournament, where yeah. he raises money. And this is the fifth year this year, Jan- uh, July fifth at the yeah. Ranch Golf and Country Club. He has raised over sixty five thousand dollars with this tournament for the Child Life Program. How many years has he been doing it? Uh, this will be the fifth year. The fifth year. For we him. Yeah, and um, and you can sign up if you want. Go to the web page. There's a sign up sheet right there ardenroofsystems.com the title sponsor which just signed up last week is a um is a canadian company pioneer golf company and we've got a couple of the founding members of that that company on with us today yeah yeah we're gonna chat with them i want to show you their website before we go pioneer golf company um i'm a big as you know big golfer i know there are a few companies out there that will turn your golf experience into something about 500% cooler. Pioneer Golf Company is one of them. It's a great web page. Web oh, page. my God. And I'm, I'm a gearhead. I'm one of those dudes. It's like, show me more. 
show me more of the things that you're doing to make golf a little cooler. And these are Canadian made small batch golf accessories. You can check them out. Uh, attention to detail. Some of the stuff that they do is incredible. Um, not only do they got golf towels, regular golf towels, head covers, which are really cool. They got a bunch of different ones. You can check out their catalog, go to pioneergolfcompany.ca. I want you to check out their sticks. These are, these are golf clubs, uh, minus the head, right? You know, the shaft, if you will, dude, they go old school with this stuff. Oh, cool. Look at that. They got custom etching. You can do make it look like it's wood. They got junior sticks. This is like. One of those things that makes golf cool. And there are a few companies out there that do that. I don't know if any there are any Canadian companies out there that have been this much of a vanguard when it comes to, you know, personalizing the golf experience to make it a little bit cooler, to make it like more of a an a la carte thing. I'm not sure, but these guys are awesome. And I only got to know them because they came on as a title sponsor for uh for the golf tournament, right? For Stacy's golf tournament with the Arden Roof Systems yep. thing for Stall the Child Life Program. Um, and they're here today, and I want to meet them. AJ and Sarah, your friends from Edmonton, Alberta, Canada. Is that correct? Bring them on. All right. AJ, Sarah. See, look at the flare they got in the background. Look at that. And you know what? Here's the thing. This is a husband and wife team. And they're smiling, and they're still business partners. <laughs> Check that out. Yeah. Check it out. There's a husband and wife team, and they're smiling, and they're still business partners. Nice to meet you both. How are you? Good. Well. How are Thanks. you guys? Yeah, we're really good. Really good. Um, you're in Edmonton. Lachlan's in Edmonton. Uh, w- tell me a little bit about Pioneer Golf. Did I kind of surmise what you guys do fairly well off the top? As a golfer, it's easy for me. Lachlan's not a golfer. I didn't really trust him with your right. reputation there for a second. No, absolutely. So uh, we basically do small batch um, high-end leather head covers as well as some hickory alignment sticks that are, are fully customizable. Yeah. Um, we recently acquired a company in the fall of last year, so we've kind of ramped up our, our production and what we're able to do. So doing a lot more stuff with golf courses, uh, corporate, um, just kind of anything golf accessory wise where we kind of got our fingers in it. So, yeah, well, good for you because it's super cool stuff. Um, you guys uh, been married a long time. Yeah, we five years as of, uh, December. December. Yeah. How long have you been business partners? Shortly after that. <laughs> Lock, could you be your business partner with your wife? Do you think that would work out? I'm I'm going to be very careful on how I choose my words here, but um, let's just say, and I, I love my wife. We've been together a long, long time. And but she's I think the professional that, in the family, right? Yes. The yeah. separation during the day was, was a strengthening position for our relationship. Yeah. I, uh, guys- I appreciated um, the fact that I got to go away yeah. from the house and i think she probably benefited from me being away from not the only house benefited on appreciated it probably more than you right so yes like, do we i've never not- understood that couple that gets up they have make coffee together have a quick bite to eat get in the car drive to work together yeah. and then spend a whole day working together that yeah. is a that is Herculean. i i yeah. don't know how else to how does it work, Reference Sarah? That. I'm not talking to AJ right now. I'm talking to Sarah. How does it work? I so, want the truth. I think the savior here is that AJ is still working full time outside of Pioneer. So I okay. think we still do have that separation for right now. So yeah. we're, we're okay for right now. <laughs> <That's good. laughs> so right now. Oh, I love it. She's like slow playing that one. <laughs> when AJ okay right so now. So you've been married she's for putting, five she's putting years. AJ on the blast too. She's yeah. like, we're okay right now, aren't we, AJ? Right, right now we are. <laughs> Today's today. good. Today's yeah. a good day. Um, so you guys have been married five years. You got into business shortly after getting married. So when did you start start Pioneer Golf Company? Uh, it would have been the uh, I guess the winter that we did get married. Um, I'm also a bit of a, a golf sicko uh, gearhead. Um, always wanted different head covers, would, would paint fill my own irons, just try to be a little bit different. Um, so Canadian winters, you got a lot of time sitting around with not a whole bunch to do. Uh, I had an idea that I wanted to try and make my own head covers. Um, so spent probably a little bit too much time um, trying to figure it all out. And eventually we got to a point where um, we were able to turn out a usable product. And uh, from there, it just kind of 
expanded and grew. We, we honed our skills, kind of adjusted things, tried to make our products as good as we possibly can. And now we're at a spot where we got an 8,000 uh, square foot warehouse um, employees awesome. and we're producing That's equipment awesome. and gear for like all over Canada. Dude. That's insane. Yeah, it's a I great love story. that story. I, I absolutely love that story. So you just took this passionate thing that you were a total nerd about, AJ, and you get married and your wife's like, you, you love this stuff too much. And you're like, I should probably <laughs> do it for a living. And most people in your situation would be like, their, their wife wouldn't be super supportive. They'd be like, you know what? Head down, do your job, keep making the money. Let's not put out a whole bunch of capital so you can follow your passion into the into bankruptcy, right? But that's not the case. Like you started this three years ago. So Sarah, did he have to twist your arm or do you believe in him that much? Or were you like, oh, maybe he's just really good at this stuff? Honestly, it was a matter of he became so good at it. He he didn't mention this, but he was the one that was doing all the sewing and taught himself how to sew. So it kind wow. of was like a slow progression. And then he would turn out a usable product and then our friends would see, and then our friends wanted head covers. And then it just kind of, okay, well, let's, I don't know, let's turn this into something. Let's get a Shopify store. Let's get a company name. So it kind of was like a slow progression, but I guess in a short amount of time. So it kind of just flowed really well. And we kind of just like rolled with it. And now we're here. So I think a lot of these stories. Yeah. I think a lot of people though, did um, probably downplay their involvement in the company, right? AJ, good for you. But I think what ends up happening to in in a good partnership, and obviously you guys are a good partnership and you guys have had success, um, massive success. I think Sarah probably fills a role that maybe AJ didn't necessarily fill and so you guys made a good team and 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 probably both deserve some credit for where the business is at today. So. AJ's a dreamer, isn't he? You're the button down person that <laughs> likes to do the details. And you're like, is, is that how this relationship works, Sarah? Right. Honestly, it's it's kind of a mixture on both ends. Like it just huh. I don't know. It just it just works at the end of the day, which is mm. Yeah, awesome. we both yeah. seem to be able to find like little little pockets that we can excel at. Yeah. And they just there's not a ton of overlap, so it ends up working working perfectly. Where I can kind of focus on my thing and get that dialed, and, and Sarah's good at stuff that I am terrible at, so it it works out awesome. Yeah, yeah, dude, that's a partnership. She's your partner, right? In yeah. every sense of the word, where you like trust her because she makes your food and you make her food, so you guys gotta kind of trust each other. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. yeah, but um, amazing story. So like, you take your passion, you guys dig in. And you decide you're going to learn some new skills. And this is the stuff I love talking about people about business resilience. Anybody that's been through it that is like, hey, this and you're getting Lachlan's going through it right now. We're all kind of part of that system where it's like, how, how can you achieve autonomy through things that you like? And some people will come up to you when you first start a business and go, you're insane. You're going to spend all that time and that capital to try and do something. There's lots of people that are doing it. The barrier to entry is this. You're not as creative as these companies like Ping already does that. Nike already does that. And you're like, no. Nah, I'm going to do this because I love it. And the feedback I'm getting is great. But then you have to do something where you feel dumb, teach yourself how to sell because you don't know how to do it. Right. Where you're like, okay, that in itself is egoless. Is it not? Was that, that hard for you? Was it like, okay, listen, I, I love this so much. I'm going to teach myself how to sell because that's a skill that you need that you don't necessarily want to go to school for or acquire because it's fairly daunting, sir. Yeah. It, uh, Truthfully, it's probably more stubbornness more than anything else. Yeah. Um, it just, I got the idea in my head and for the most part, once I kind of set my mind to something for better or for worse, I don't really stop until I get it all figured out. Um, so it was, yeah, it was just one of those things where once I decided that I wanted to try and do it, I didn't really want to give up or, or accept that I couldn't figure it out and eventually just got to the point where I was competent at it. I'll say. Is there, is is there a product guys that you, that you've created that you, that, that you absolutely love? Is there, is there one piece that you guys are like, Oh, this is. Um, I don't know if there's one piece per se, uh, some of the some of the early stuff that we did was really really cool because we were able to um, kind of see it start to finish. Um, a lot of the ideas though that we're getting from from customers for course orders and stuff like that, kind of seeing 
there, whether it be a basic sketch or just a kind of description of what they're looking for yeah. and kind of going through the whole process of, okay, we're going to mock it up. We're going to, we're going to do the things that are possible to be done. Um, we'll steer clear of the stuff that's maybe going to not turn out as great as it could a different route and just seeing it go from ideas on a page to a head cover in someone's bag is, is always a pretty rewarding, rewarding thing. This stuff yeah. is really cool. Oh is, yeah, dude, look at the the the, yeah. uh, the catalog that they have. Ball markers, great ball caps, cool stickers, head covers. They got everything. They got hoodies you, and everything. You can go it, on it, and you can order individual items, yeah. obviously. But I mean, you guys do a lot of work with with uh, with companies, like you said, corporate stuff, and and uh, probably a lot of golf tournaments. Where do you have a sense of where most of your business comes from, Sarah? Um, I would say most of our business right now is coming from golf courses. Yeah. yeah. Um, for gear to go in their their pro shops for their members. So okay. Yeah, I'd yeah. say right now it's golf courses for sure. That's cool. And and you work directly with these with these clients on what they're looking for. So so there's design stuff that you guys have to do and things to that effect. Yeah. Yeah. People like so golf course logos and stuff like that. Yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, we have uh, we'll have like stock designs that we can plug and play logos into. Yeah. Um, for courses that maybe not necessarily have like exactly what they're looking for, and just kind of are looking for like a little bit of direction to to narrow it down. Because when it's when you're kind of looking at that blank piece of paper, and you're like, all right, what do you want to do? We can kind of do anything. At times, that's almost so daunting that having a 10 or 12 different designs that you can change colors, yeah. um, all logos to things like that. It just seems a little bit on the easier side. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I guess it would be. It's interesting because everybody that loves the game, um, you know, if you do love the game, you love all parts of the game. If you're a golfer, yeah. right. And the, and the part of the game that a lot of people love that goes unheralded, right. Is the actual fashion of the game, but it's not even necessarily what you're wearing. Right. It's how does your bag look? Do you have a lot of flair on your bag? Is it a little bit different? And it's amazing when you show up to the golf course with like a completely different set of clubs, how you get guys that come over to you. Literally, I'm sure you do every time you show up because you've got a bag full of Pioneer Golf Company stuff that's super, super a la carte, right? Super unique and interesting. But you get these dudes. Like you could, you could be on the tee block. There's like a couple other foursomes kind of warming up on the putting green. And like someone sees a cool head cover or a cool stick and they're like, what is that? They get like drawn to it. It's like guy, golf guys are crazy. Like oh. the most rabid people. Yeah. You, you must have that, right? Guys are like, I love all your stuff. Send me everything. I'll whatever I want. Put my credit card on file. Send me all the new shit all the time. That's how crazy people are for golf gear now, right? <laughs> yeah, it's, it's definitely a bit of a niche market, but it's strong. There's, there's a lot of passion. Um, there's a there's a few like quite a few companies that do unreal work, um, and it's just it's neat to see the the different styles and varieties that people do come up with. Um, even we get it from like on our custom side with the requests that we're looking for. We get a lot of the traditional stuff, which is kind of more our bread and butter. Um, but from time to time, we do get a, a wild or a crazy idea, and you're like, oh, I would never have thought of doing anything like that, but it turns out super cool. Do you ever say no to any designs? You ever go, yeah, listen, we can't do something that looks like genitalia? No? Kind of <laughs> like the license plates. <laughs> I have to say no every once in a while. Yeah. Yeah. You know, like custom jerseys in the NFL shop, there's a whole list of things you can't see. On the you can't see. Do you have a list of things that you won't build for people or put on a head cover? We, you know what? We haven't really run into that yet. I, that might be something where we're building the plane while it's in the air and just kind of making those – those uh, decisions as they come. Yeah. Or you do that, you'll make something that you're like, hey, listen, I don't want to tell people that we made this. It's just the guy paid a lot of money for it. We cannot yeah. put our logo on it. <laughs> yeah. Have you done that? Um, we, did a, uh, we did a unique um, retirement piece, actually, for, uh, for Tyler Ennis. Um, we're oh, wow. Buddies with, uh, with his cousin there. So um, mm -hmm. he kind of wanted to commission a piece. So we did up a few leather head covers that – that's awesome. Kind of showcase the different NHL teams that he was on and, and played for. Uh, what a overseas. great idea. That's awesome. Right? Yeah. yeah. So you had to make you... like 60 head covers because Tyler Ennis played for six <laughs> different teams. I was just going to say you that. You put all the different logos on one head <laughs> yeah. cover. 
Uh, oh, okay, how, okay, how that's smart. Thirty teams fit that. on yeah, one. Yeah. Um, I've I've got a question about the the game, and, and and to just sort of pivot a little bit away from um what you guys do. I I get the sense that golf kind of took a bit of a hit, um, in the last five ten years, but I don't know if it was the live stuff or what. But I just I get a feeling, and, and maybe you guys are on the same page with me, AJ Sarah, but. The games, there seems to be some energy behind the game again. A am I wrong? No, I definitely think from from the recreational side, it seems that that's stronger than it's it's ever been. Um, yeah. As as far, long as I've been kind of around golf, I think on the professional side, you're definitely seeing your your hardcore fans because again, it is still like a little bit of a niche sport from a from a viewership standpoint, especially when you don't have a, a Tiger Woods. Um, in the picture. Yeah. It just seems that maybe fans are starting to get a little bit worn down of, of all the noise around the sport. Um, yeah. It's not the greatest product to watch on TV. Um, it seems like the majority of the talks are always about money and purse sizes. So yeah. um, it's, it's frustrating to see golf, the momentum of it really kind of chugging along right now and more and more people are getting involved whether it be in in kind of your top golf driving range stuff to actually getting involved in regular uh, regular golf, um, we're just not there. I don't think they're able to kind of capture that right now with all the noise that's going on. It's you're getting pulled yeah. in multiple yeah. different. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah you, you you bring up a good point, and I want to ask you about that too because there's there was a culture in golf. I can't, I'm a little bit older than you. Imagine you're not 51, so. You know, I used to really appreciate the serenity around the game, the pants, the collared shirt, the quiet on the tee, that kind of stuff. It was like this really quiet, nice, peaceful place to go. Top golf is not quiet, nor is it peaceful. <laughs> um, and so it's like they, they've really splintered off the idea that golf should be for everybody. It should be fun and activity. It's not something where you take it super seriously. You go practice where you got, okay, I'm going to top golf to practice keeping my head down <laughs> over the ball. Like it's not something you do, right? Yeah. Um, and then you see the splintering of the PGA with Liv coming in, and you see those two guys get together. And I read this morning, Steve Cohen, I don't know if you heard of this. This is New York billionaire starting something called Tomorrow's Golf League, which I believe starts this week. Have you heard of this? No, I haven't heard of that. Oh, yeah. Th there are golf teams. Like, you can own a golf team. Ricky Fowler's in it. Xander Shopley's in it. Oh, okay. Or you can own, like, an, your entire golf team like it's a franchise, and you send these ah. guys out to go and play in these tournaments as a team and as singles and stuff like that. Do you, like, does that excite you as a younger golfer that they're mixing it up and the PGA Tour seems to have been pierced by, you know, other leagues that are, like, not so snotty and a little more fun? Um, I don't, I don't think that side of it bothers me. Um, I'd say I'm probably, you one of those snotty purists. I'm, I'd say I'm probably more on the purist side, but at the really? same time, like I like to listen to music on the golf course. I don't think everybody else on the golf course needs to hear what I'm listening to, but I do like it kind of for our cart and for our group. Um, so from that side, I'd say like, I kind of like some of the stuff that's Liv's doing. Um, I think my biggest thing though, is I'd love to see the best players always playing against each other. Like we've got a yeah. tournament coming up in a couple of weeks here with the masters. It's probably everybody's favorite tournament to watch. Um, especially in Canada, it's almost the start of our golf season. So, uh, it always is kind of good memories with stuff like that. Um, but I mean, that's going to be the first time that we get to see all the best players in the world, um, kind of back with maybe a few exceptions because of kind of issues with qualifications and stuff like that. So um, my biggest thing is not so much that we're moving away from, from traditional golf per se. It's just that we're not getting to see the, the best players really compete at the highest level as often as it's we being probably. segmented yeah. a little yeah, bit. So the industry. Yeah. 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 I, I have a question and this might um, say more about me than um, I'm willing to admit, but for quite a few years when I started golf, <laughs> my wife was better than me. And so there was a lot of Stories. anger around the sport for me. Like it, it brought up deep emotions. Yeah. 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 Um, you know, I'm on 13 and she's three strokes ahead of me. Yeah. I had a hard time dealing with that. So I did spend some time in the parking lot in the car by myself 
on a couple of golf trips. <laughs> Sarah, how are you compared to uh, AJ? Um, I'm surprisingly, I'm not a golfer yet. Yet okay. I do want to commit to practicing and being able to hit the ball. So okay. that's where I'm at. But I do have a decked out golf bag. So I guess. Okay, there you of course you do. <laughs> She's geared up. She's geared up. She's geared up. Yeah. yeah. You're one of those people that shows up to the course and it, you got a bag and it's on your shoulder and you got the visor and you got all the gear. And then you're like, okay, now I got to go. <laughs> just, I'm just along for the snacks and maybe a beverage. Or two. Yeah. Yeah. As you should yeah. be. Um, I'm there for the beverages quite often as well. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 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 I used to be too. It's funny because I remember you used to call it swing oil. Yeah, and uh, I used to like, and I legitimately, this is a true story. So I played in this pro am years ago, and I was like two over after three, and I'm like, I need a drink. I went five under over the next over the next six holes, and I'm like, that's it, that's it. Have more drinks on the back, uh, ten over on the back. <laughs> so that's when I stopped drinking. But it, it was so fun. Like I, this is the thing about it, right? Like you, I remember when when the pandemic hit. Did you guys start the business during the pandemic? By the way, it was just just before. Yeah, is that fun? No, it's it was, <laughs> you know it might have been one of the like the best things that that happened. Yeah. Um, it really forced us to get creative. Um, it yeah. forced us to source out material from more locations we try and keep as much of our our material local as possible and kind of support other local businesses through that so yeah. it was really difficult with with closures um companies running out of uh the products they were selling not being able to replace them with with shipping and stuff like that so we got very good at finding out all the different places that we could get what we needed um it was super stressful at the start but i i do think that it kind of it, it forced us very early on to, it's either like figure it out or move Find on. Find black market supplies. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Guy named Jerry showed up at the back of the warehouse. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like you're doing something wrong. Hey, dude, you, got the, you, got the, you got the fabric? <laughs> Listen, guys, I really want to. I, really I don't want to unload the fabric in front of the cameras. I really want to thank you guys for your time. Right. And 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 I know I, I talked to Ardent and Stacy uh, about your involvement in the tournament, and he was thrilled to have you guys a, again involved, but this year in an even uh, bigger role as the title sponsor of that tournament, which is happening at the Ranch Golf and Country Club on Friday, July 5th. If you go to ArdenRoofSystems.com, you can sign up, register yourself. As a, I believe he's got a couple of sponsorship opportunities still available. So if you're in the Edmonton area, you might want to give him a shout and, and touch base with him on that. Uh, but sign yourself up as an ind individual or a team. I will be hosting that day. The ranch is a fun place to do a tournament to get the famous steak dinner. And then um, Arden also has a massive silent auction every year, which raises a ton of money as well um, for the Stollery Child Life program. So you guys, I know Stacy was, again, he was thrilled. He called me right away when you guys signed up to be the title sponsor and i said well then we're gonna get him on the podcast to talk about this amazing local company yeah. that by the way does a lot of work right across the country so if you're listening to this in ontario or you're listening to this in halifax and you're looking for something cool you might want to check out their webpage dean do you want to throw it up one more time before yeah, we absolutely sign um, off with them i would love to pioneer golf is the name of the company pioneergolfcompany.ca is where you can find this beautiful um, these are good people, salt of the earth people from Great Edmonton, webpage, Alberta, too. Canada, and they make incredible flair for golf, yeah. the small batch stuff that you're looking for, kind of personalize your golf game a little bit, towels, accessories. They've got unbelievable sticks. Do you have some X stiffs in there? X stiffs, maybe an inch longer than normal. Yeah. No <laughs> X stiffs for, for Dino. No, I need a little bit longer and I need it to be a lot like a, a lie hockey stick. It's a lie. He doesn't know what he needs. He has no idea what he needs. He's just he just wants some free stuff. Don't give it to him. I swing as hard as I can. Yeah. Um, but dude, check this out. Uh, this is for every Canadian, Canadian company. You can buy from anywhere, but you should buy Canadian from people who uh legitimately started this and decided to be part of this business because they love it and they're a great little Canadian success story. Um, and I'm pretty sure that's Phil Mickelson's butt in, in the front page of the, uh, of the picture. I could is be that wrong. Phil's bum? Is, is that Phil's bum? A bunch of them. 
That's AJ's bum. That's AJ's bum. Is that your bum? That's AJ? a golfer's bum. Great leg, that. dude. Yeah, you a nice little golf rig on you. Yeah, golf and hockey player. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I see why so Sarah's in love. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Sarah, AJ, thanks so much. PioneerGolfCompany.ca uh, is where you can check these guys out. Tunnel sponsor uh, for the Ardent Roof Systems Stollery Child Life Program Invitational, where you can sign up. Go to. Arden I think you just made up a whole new name for the golf tournament. That's awesome, Dean. <laughs> yeah, well, it's the it's the Nyquil. <laughs> Dayquil. <laughs> on two of them aj sorry i didn't mean to be super super greased up on cold medication <laughs> it's all good it's all good yeah, hey, thank you guys good. we yeah, really thanks. appreciate you taking some time this morning that's awesome thank, thank you, you so much appreciate it guys anytime appreciate it nice people look at that business. Go check out that web page i love successful people. i love people that start something from nothing yeah it's so good you it, know what i mean yeah yeah, it is. I and again, like we've we've had this conversation multiple times, right? Where we bring somebody on and and uh, and we're like, ah, oh, we'll be ten minutes with you, and then we spend thirty minutes with them, right? Yeah, yeah, because yeah, their story is so cool. Yeah. yeah, yeah, dude. There should be like a whole podcast. I was thinking about this the other day. A whole podcast on on just everyday Canadians who just followed their passion into commerce. You know what I mean? I'm yeah. fascinated by those people. Like AJ, Sarah, husband, wife, couple. He's it's a wiring. Passion. He's a gearhead. His wife's like, you love it so much. Yeah. You should get into business. And he's like, done. Learns yeah. how to sell. They're laughing in the background right now looking at me because she's like, that's exactly what happened. I'm like, yeah, no kidding. That's exactly what happened. Good for them. And and you see how like they're making a go of it. 8,000 square foot warehouse out of Edmonton, Alberta. Yeah. Winter, six months of the year. They're this burgeoning little golf company. You know why? Because they care. You they know, care about what they do. I will say this. Listen, I'm not. I'm not suggesting that there aren't people that uh, are successful in other parts of the country, but there is this. There, there is a sense of of sort of entrepreneurial spirit in Alberta mm -hmm. that you don't get in other parts of the country. You, honestly, Dean, you don't like there. Th we got a hardy bunch here, and Big we got time. people that take that take chances on things. It's it's a very um it's a very charitable province and mm -hmm. it is it is a very hardy province and it there's again that's why I get a little bit twitchy when we start shit talking you know the because it's all based on the, the politics West. right it's based on the politics there's good people here and hardworking and yeah yeah you know what I was thinking about it we were talking about COVID off the top and. Uh, we talked yesterday, a couple of days ago, about how the things that we thought were real not so real anymore, right? Like we're, the truth yesterday wasn't the truth today. We talk about serious stuff here. We also have fun. And I was thinking about it a lot this last week. And it's got nothing to do with the fact that I've got Ebola right now. But I was thinking about it and I thought, you know, over the last three, four years, we've ignored, completely ignored the good parts of people that have different perspectives in one aspect of their lives. Mm -hmm. And because of that one aspect of their lives, we've just written people off. Yeah. Right? Well, and it's not, not even something anybody can control. And because people have these thoughts or ideas, and yes, there are people that have hateful ideas. I get that. Yeah. But there's also people on the, every side of every, from every group that misrepresent the entire group because they have hateful perspectives. And I'm so tired of the way that we have treated each other over the past three, four years. And everyone's guilty. The, like everybody. I'm guilty. You're guilty. Yeah. Well, I'm not I'm as less guilty. guilty than you in everything. Uh, no, I, can I, can I say something? Cause it's interesting that we're having this conversation. So we do Please. this retro replay of the day from the locker room. Yeah. So I've been going back. I have like every moment of the show that we did for nine years, like archived. And so I've been remembering breaks that we've done and I'll go back and, and try to find them. And for whatever reason, last, I think it was like last couple of days, I've been around March, April, May of 2020. Mm -hmm. And though, and I've been listening to those shows and it's, and I, and I was curious, I stopped and paid attention to, how we navigated this and and you know what it's interesting i was saying this right out of the gates 
I was saying, you know, like we're just doing our best to digest this information and try to, you know, I, I, mm. I, I'm, I'm trying not to have an opinion one way or the other. I want to do the right thing. But at the same time, my my brain, the way it's wired is I automatically go towards I don't trust somebody yeah. telling me that I have to do this. Right. So there was this struggle and this back and forth. And I remember it quite clearly, especially after going back and revisiting some of these these conversations that we were having. And again, like I made mistakes. We all made mistakes. We all jumped too quick. I remember having a conversation with recently with you saying how scared you were about what was happening. And again, we were all in that kind of boat Mm -hmm. um, and we were all reacting according to our own sort of situation. But I again and listen. I don't, I, I'm not trying to take credit for something here, but I, I, I think I handled this really well as a broadcaster because we were pointing out some of the stupid stuff and we were like, this is crazy. Like, I remember we had a con, I was listening to a conversation we were having about the masks and this was before anybody was all wound up about masks. It was like literally very early on in the conversation. And I'm like, okay, listen, if somebody tells me to put this stupid thing on, I'm going to wear it. I also have to wear pants to go buy liquor, right? So I'm going to put it on. I'm going to try not to be it, but somebody yeah, there tell are minimal me, rules that you follow. Yes. But so. yes, but I, I remember saying out loud, is this really going to protect me from a deadly disease? It's a piece of cloth that my wife sewed in the kitchen, right? Like, is it really going to help? And okay, maybe it's only 5%. Okay. I'll wear it then. I'll wear it. Why are we telling everybody that this is going to save all our lives when it just seems ridiculous? And and then it kind of it kind of weaves its way into the conversation we've had lately when we we bring these people on, their perspective and what they went through framed how they viewed this whole thing. And that's mm. the conversations I think we need to have moving forward about how we handle this stuff down the road if we ever have to handle it again. Like massive damage last week. He lost just about everything. His everything he loves was taken away from him. So So when you hear him yell out, Justin Trudeau can eat a bag of dicks, you kind of go, okay, he lost everything. Yeah. Right? You know, and that's, that's the piece that I regret not addressing during the pandemic was taking a minute to listen to people like massive damage, Mm -hmm. taking a minute. And I'll tell you something. If not for my girlfriend, I would not have this perspective and I'm not going to get into it, but this person has opened my eyes to individual preference and choice. And we've seen both sides of the equation, super vax, anti vax, whatever, seen all those people try to use that as an absolute, right? Mm-hmm. We're still then, doing it. People are yep, still doing it. 100%. I'm watching, and I get it. They're infectious disease experts going, hey, everybody, this new. I'm like, I don't care anymore. I don't care. I did my piece. Everybody out there is doing their piece. We are a sick society. We're not going to get any healthier. It's endemic now. Why are we using this to hurt each other? Why? Why are we doing that? We're gonna. Like, I'm gonna put this video out and dunk on everybody because of how dumb I think they are. Right? Yeah. And this because they're not vaccinated. Like I saw whatever, someone the yeah. other day that I worked with. Nice guy. He puts out like a three minute video on how dumb anti vaxxers are. And I'm like, are we not done with that? Yeah, dude. Still like, happening. Fucking seriously, are you not done with that? Because there are reasons and they won't let those things go. And you're not going to do anything about it. So what are you doing to them? And in course, what are you doing to you? Right? And I realize in 2024 what that perspective did to me. And nothing good. Nothing good. You know, there are relationships I don't have anymore because... The other side felt the same way I did about information we were given by politicians over what that person's all about if they believe a certain thing to do with their own bodies. And I feel that way about abortion. I feel that way about all of it. All Mm -hmm. of it is that 
you know, are we going to ruin our lives in this living experience and our close personal relationships over the fact that someone did or did not do the same thing you did during a three year cold and flu season that killed about 40,000 Canadians? Well, well, by the way, you, you know what? Like, out. I know people that left the country because of the rules revolving around how to handle this, right? Like, to and in some cases, and dude, you can't you can't paint everybody that did that with the same brush either. No, right? There are people who left the country because to go to Costa Rica to go to Costa right? Rica to get away from the law, and they used it as an excuse. But there are people <laughs> that who are like, you know what? This is my body. I'm not even allowed to earn a fucking living or get on a fucking plane to see my yeah. family. Well, Adam, Adam Scorgi, who he had on. Yeah. He's got the, um, the, uh, the debut of breaking Olympia. He's got the, yeah, the I, saw the, I saw the trailer for it. It looks fucking great. Yeah. Anyway, that's this Saturday. I just got a text from him this morning. He, we had him on a couple of weeks ago and he was talking about how crazy it was trying to do business in COVID and how bizarre it was that no one, no one from country to country could get on the same page about how to handle it. And that's yeah. when he started to question things. It's like, why can I not do this in Canada, but I can do it in Sweden? And why can I not do this in Spain yet? I can do this. And and why is it that I can fly to Texas, but I can't go to Colorado? Like you start to question things coming from your perspective based on what you're trying to accomplish in your day-to-day -day life. Yeah, yeah. And, and again, like I said, it frames how you view this thing yeah. and see my, my world didn't change. They just told all the, the rest of the staff to go home. Yeah. And then they said, you got to keep coming to work and doing your thing. So I was taking in all this information from a guy whose life did not change at all. I still saw the same two assholes every morning. We still tried to be entertaining every day. And then I would get in the car and I would go home. Yeah. You went to work. Yeah. I went to work. I just wasn't doing any events. So so I, I was like, all right, okay, well, this must be normal. Like the rest of the world's doing this, right? No, the rest of the world wasn't doing it. Everyone was trying floundering. We did a little social experiment yesterday on the show. You want to, you want to read those tweets now? I would love to. Yeah. How this angry kind of people are. This into the conversation that we were having. And dude, you know who did this? Yeah. I'll tell you who did this, right? Political culture. Yes. They did, they did this to us. They did this to us, and, and we, we and that is need to be aware of that. I think I think that needs well, to. I think people are catching on. Like you know, I'm a very very serious apolitical asshole, right? Like I don't like any party. I don't like you any have group. to be. I don't like you have any to be culture. nowadays. And people are starting to catch on. Like yesterday, we had that tax conversation, the carbon tax. By the way, saw a bunch of people in Alberta protesting. Fuck with fuck Trudeau flags yesterday. Well, they were doing it right oh. across the country. Just so you know, know. not just Alberta. Well, I'm not. There you go. So you're doing it right now. It doesn't upset. Just doing upset exactly me. what you said you didn't want to do. <laughs> no, it doesn't upset me anymore because I'm like, oh, I get it. I get why you hate him. I mean, I don't get why you spent a whole day decal your whole car, waste a bunch of money and time on it. But hey, you do you, boo. You do you. You you hate what you want to hate. Whoever it. came up with the fuck Trudeau design deserves some kind of an award because it's actually not a bad looking design. I think it looked the, really good on the back of the Subaru for about. I think a it's six the can, like I think it's one or two of the Canada proud people. Same people that are suing us uh, for hundreds of thousands of dollars for. Well, they're really people. good on that on that program yeah, that made hell that of a design. fucking flag design. Yeah, <laughs> it's really taken off. So here, I'll show you a couple of the. Yeah, the tweets. Yeah, uh, because yesterday you, you we were talking about this. How you said I just had a shit that was so big. I'm worried liberals made out a few more percentage points than carbon tax. And then you said, "Why don't you put that out on Twitter and see what yeah. kind of response you get?" Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just to uh, sort of so we were kind of trolling Twitter yesterday because yeah. that was just a text to uh, to to Dean in the morning while I was sitting on the toilet. I was trying to be funny. You're in Alberta, so Daniel like, will get you with the provincial tax too. Like they, <laughs> some people just cannot help themselves, right? Oh well, yeah, that's their way of, dis of defending a different tax that Trudeau put in. Wow, you're an idiot. That's from Sharon. <laughs> we have a new leader in the clubhouse. <laughs> they took that was seriously. my favorite response. <laughs> uh, wow, I should have shown that one last. Uh, oh, this one's good too. He tried to take a nice, nice, easy way out. Thank you yeah. for doing your part, good sir. You know what, dude, dude? It's like amazing how seriously did you name it, Justin? Before you flushed it away, like I hope we do next election. 
these guys are so mad about who the next prime minister is going to be. <laughs> Oh, and, and you care. know what, man? Uh, I I don't know if I if you saw this because um, I know you've been you, you've been a little out of it this morning and yeah. you're whacked out on cold medicine. But I yeah. I sent you a picture of the because I cut that conversation out from yesterday's podcast that we had about the carbon tax. Yeah, and I did a little in the biz. It's got micro content. And I put that out and it took off last night. I, I had a look at it and how many it's got over 10. It had 8,000 before we started the podcast. It's got over 10,000 views on Twitter Seriously? or on TikTok. Did you tag me? In it? I didn't even see it. No, I just, it sent you a text. Oh, you put it on TikTok. I put it on. Yeah. You, I put all our stuff on TikTok. Oh, I'm a Chinese okay. spy. Something you, you should like probably know about me. You do not look like a Chinese spy. <laughs> like, look at that. 10,700 views on that Alberta carbon tax math. Yeah. Yeah. We did the math for everybody yesterday. yesterday. Anyway, my point was the pandemic fucked us over. It did. Like we're, you know, and it's not like I was thinking about it too, because I have lots of friends that think the same thing. Like literally one of my smartest friends. I have a friend who's the smartest person I know. Smarter than smarter than you? Met. Oh yeah, hundred percent smarter than me. He's like the smartest guy I know. And we go for coffee a couple weeks ago, and I'm like, Hank, you make a COVID. He's like, Do you think it was fake? <laughs> and I'm like, Really careful how I answer that question. And he's like, And keep in mind, science, proof, data, smartest guy I know. And I'm like, No, do you? He goes getting there and this guy reads 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 and does not he's not in a silo and he's like i have a feeling and this was like and i believe this to kind of be the prevailing oh, I love, kind of are we get, are we getting into conspiracy theory waters i love this not quite okay like how we're kind of you know the poles have kind of collapsed and we're settling into the middle and these new ideas right and the new idea that definitely, and this is not a new idea because we see the result of it today because our neighbors hate us, right? Our friends are gone and all the other shit that we deal with on a daily basis because of this, because that guy's a lib, that guy's a con, that guy's a fascist, that guy's a commie, like fuck all of it. He's like, as much as people on that side try to pretend that this was just nothing but an operation, which he doesn't believe it was, the people on that side He's convinced, and I'm convinced too now, absolutely used it to test the will of the people. Huh. And I do not doubt that for mm. a fucking second. And here's what it comes down Divide to. And conquer. I think, yeah. I think that you've got really strong cultural global entities now that are teaming up on the right, teaming up on the left, right? You get those, like in one country, you get the, 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 the people from the left or the people from the right in one country, in one country, not a global movement. It's not that big of a deal. You can usually see around it unless it's a dictatorial country like Russia where they get one piece of information and that's it, right? But globally speaking, business interests, certain interests, mm liberal interest, conservative interest, progressive, woke, unwoke interest. It's really what it comes down to. I have literally thrown the kitchen sink and it's the really, really, really wealthy people. And this seems to be the new consensus. Really wealthy people took us for a fucking ride over the yeah. past three years, trying so. to convince us that we needed to get on one of those sides, right? I had a, I, I had a real problem just in the same vein. Just, I, I don't want to interrupt your flow. I make here, it but sense. I, I, you, you're making total sense. My big issue during the pandemic was why was it okay to go to Walmart, but it wasn't okay to go to that mom and pop shop. I, that drove me insane. Why was it okay to go to the liquor store, but you couldn't go to your parents' fucking funeral? Yeah. Yeah. I, How was the, there a lockdown was, there was a okay? Lot of, yeah. How was a lockdown okay in this country? You want to know why I don't like Trudeau? I don't talk about this very much because it's like death talking about any one of these knobs and I don't like any of them. Yeah. How is it possible? That Justin Trudeau, two years after he gets a minority government, wins again. Sickest we've ever been. 
sickest. No vaccines. Mm. How is it possible he calls an election three years early so he can get more seats while we're at our sickest, while he's also, on the other hand, advocating for people to go nowhere, do nothing? Yeah. How well, is that and fucking possible? The other, the and, other, and the now other I'm like that. done with all of it. Not interested in advocating for any of them. I'm going to advocate for the people who have been confused and shit on for the past. And I don't care what side of the equation you're. On. Well, and y- you know what? Y- you talk about the damage that it did. Um, oh yeah. Like I, I mean, I've got I've got a very very personal story. Like so, my mom and her partner. They, they never got married. My mom had been married a couple of times, so she chose not to actually marry Carl and and Carl and, and, and her were just a good, a good couple. And they were together for 20 plus years, lived in Vancouver. And when the pandemic hit, uh, Carl is, he he, he was a little bit different, right? Like, and we always, everyone knew this wasn't a big surprise that he kind of went a little bit onto the, to under the anti-vax side of things, refused to get a vaccine and was vocal. You know, when I call mommy, Carl would want to have a conversation about it. And I just, I listened and um, he didn't do well in the pandemic. And he succumbed to cancer a couple of months back. We actually have a ceremony in Vancouver. It's it's kind of, he jokingly told my mom years ago that if he passed away before her, he wanted her to steal. There's a ship in the lagoon, in, the lagoon, in, in English Bay in mm-hmm. Vancouver. He wanted her to steal that, put his body on the ship, and burn it in Vancouver. And uh, so she's got his ashes. He's been cremated. And she bought this replica um, boat online, and we're going to put it in the water. And uh, I said, do I get to shoot it with a crossbow with a flaming? <laughs> like a Viking. <laughs> so we're still going back and forth about that. Yeah. Um, so we're going down there to celebrate Carl's life. But Carl effectively, and again, this is going to sound harsh, but he killed himself with alcohol during the pandemic. Mm. He did not cope well mm. and um, drank very heavily, did not do well during mm. during the pandemic and and had a belief structure that was difficult to be. He 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 ostracized himself from a lot of people. Yeah. And, and the only reason I bring it up is is uh, I, I like Carl was a really good guy. Like a very good man, and he just it's couldn't. Sad. He just couldn't buy into what was happening, and and whereas I was trying to do what I thought was the right, I think a lot of us were trying to do what we thought was the right thing. You were doing what you needed to do. Mm-hmm. I mean, I, I and I was trying to do what I needed to do, and and it was a difficult time because. If you are, if you do what we do, if you create content, you're having daily meetings with people that also have very strong opinions. Yeah. And so there was this, this, this push and pull and it was difficult to figure out who stood where and how you should present yourself. And like, and we're still dealing with that. And, you know, there are probably people that would never come onto this podcast because of their perceived idea of what my opinion was during COVID and maybe yours, mm-hmm. right? Like, that's just crazy that that is still, that is still happening over, over a sickness over, you know, over, that and, affects and you know what? All I, of us, right? Like, and that, I think mistakes. that that's everyone made mistakes. Totally. But like we, we literally hurt each other and yeah. are going to great lengths to do it still Yes, over an Stop illness it, that nobody can control that affects all of us. Stop it. And like, what is your point? Like, what are you trying to accomplish if you are still in that zone right I now? I understand. Where you're putting videos about, out about how stupid somebody was di- that didn't get vaccinated. Yeah, I don't, I don't understand. I don't understand. You know, and I, and I used to, like, you know, in, in terms of content, and, and listen, that's what runs this space now. Angry content. This person did this. That's who they are. That yeah. they did this. It's what they are. You know, they did this. They're fascists. They did this. They're communists. They did this. They're Satanists. They did this. They're Christian nationalists. They did this. They did this. It's who they are. And the effort and the money that goes into presenting people as terrible people for certain cultures, it's literally murdering people. To your point, Carl, who died. I know three people that I worked with. 
prior to the pandemic on their drinking that drank themselves to death in the first two years of the pandemic. I know two more people who are on death's door because of that thing, because they couldn't make sense couldn't of cope. what happened. You know, how do I deal with this? And their coping mechanisms are alcohol, so they doubled down and it makes all the sense in the world. But are we done yet? You know, I think that's the question I think everybody has to ask themselves. You know, can we be better than that? Can you be better than that? Can you be better than literally hurting uh, your neighbor, a human being who's on their journey of life and you're throwing logs at them, you're blow darts at them while they're mm -hmm. trying to figure it out and they're doing the same to you because you disagree on medicine that you don't understand or you disagree on an illness that you don't quite understand, which was a terrible time for everybody. Yeah. You can't come to that point where you come back into the middle and you say, hey, because I can do it. Everybody else can do it. Yeah. And I'm telling you something. Here's the other thing not a lot of people understand. What's, and I say this all the time, but there's nothing more true. What is bad for the hive is bad for the bee. It's worse for the bee. You are killing yourself, no matter what side of the equation you're on. If you hate Justin Trudeau or if you hate Pierre Polyev and all the things that come with them, these are symptoms. These people represent symptoms of anger and these anger flames have been fanned by these people and they do it all the time for money and they do it for influence. And that is the world we live in. And if you cannot understand that, and if you're going to take the side of any institution that's telling you who to be mad at, as opposed to going to that person and having that conversation yourself, but with that human being, listen, I am friends with certain people like David Parker, other people who you'd go, you're, you hang out with that guy. He has such different, like, what? Yeah, I do. For one reason, one reason only. They're nice to me. To get like perspective, them. though, too. Uh, and they give that's me something perspective that's, on that's what they something have. That's something you have. That's a gear I've seen you grab here in the last couple of months that I, that I find interesting. Well, that, we, you know, we you're might listening think we're and you're trying, you're trying yeah. to open up your mind to another idea. An, a, well, we might think that we're thinking. right in a moment, right? Yeah. Like, you know, there's so many people out there that are hardened to their perspectives of what they're right. And I, I still believe what I believe. What I believe is right for me might not be right for you anymore. And that's okay. Yeah. And I want you to be happy. I don't know what that is or what that looks like for you or for anybody else. And I can't speak to your experiences. So why would I subject you to how I feel? Yeah. About myself and say, you got to do the same because this is my path. This is what I do. Not a lot of people want to walk a mile in my shoes. And I get it. And I don't want to walk a mile in other people's shoes. But to discount that experience as absolutely inessential to who it is you're dealing with because you know better, that's the problem we have with religion. That is the problem we have with politics. politics. That is yeah. the problem we have with the law. That is the problem we have with media. These are the problems that we have. It's being told. And we've taken it another step further, being told what to believe. And if we don't believe it, what that means that you must be or I must be. And we internalize that and then we kill ourselves. That's what happens. As opposed to you're allowed to believe that and you have worth. As mad as I was about the convoy because it didn't sit well with me and I hate protests. Every single one of those people has worth as a human being. Every single person there. Not every person was a Nazi. Not every person was stupid. Not every person was this person. There's a large selection of people that were largely hoodwinked into doing something for nothing. Yeah, there's that. There's always yeah, that. Right? But, yeah. but so are the people. And let me point this out. So are the people that were telling you you're racist because you refuse to get vaccinated. Yeah. Same yeah. people. Yeah. Softer input. Everyone in this country is tired of being told what their worth is by someone who doesn't know them. Yeah. And institutions that don't care about them. Fuck all of it. Fuck them. Fuck the government. The only thing that matters is you and your well-being and the people that you communicate with. Keep talking to those people. Accept those people as different to you. Don't, don't tell them that they don't have worth because they're not vaccinated or they are. Yeah. Don't tell them that they're dumb or worse than you or less than you because they choose to wear a mask or not or believe in God or don't. Listen, I got my theories on religion. For the extremes, I think extremes misrepresent the whole in every situation. My family, all born again Christians, and you won't find nicer people. You won't more find more loving, accepting people. They're real Christians in my mind. They're misrepresented mm -hmm. by other people. But for a long time, I take this tack that 
you guys are nothing because you believe in this weird thing that I don't believe in, man, yeah. that's wrong too. Yeah. So for everybody that has the opportunity to go back, we're doing this in a podcast. And reason why we're doing this in a podcast, because it, 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 it needs to be on the record. Like when you decide you're not going to drink anymore and you're going to take that stand. I think generally speaking, everyone is tired yeah. of being told who to love and who to hate, who's smart and who isn't, and who we're allowed to talk to and who we're not. Okay. Well put. So let's all try a little bit today to fucking take your guard and put it down here. You know, we can't do this to each other anymore. This is not, we're, that is not the Canadian way to do things. We welcome people with open arms. doesn't matter where they're from or what their beliefs are. Yeah. Because yeah. someone believes something different than you. I mean, sure, within reason, not going to invite a Nazi to a dinner party and go, let's kumbaya. Of course you're not. They're not going to invite a serial killer or someone with hateful, resentful, racially hateful views. Of course you're not. Or hate people who hate different people because of their sexual intention. Of course you're not. There are immutable yeah. facts, people who you're allowed to hate and not have over for a dinner party. Well, let's stop doing this. I can't do it anymore. Yeah. I don't want to. The one truth, though, um, and, and we can wrap up with this, is that Justin Trudeau is to blame for all of it. <laughs> Glad you ended there. Okay, no, hold on. Let's get the yeah. retro replay. You're going to like the retro replay of the day. Okay. All right. This is a brought to you one. by Ardent Roof Systems. Yes. The Lock, the lock, lock Retro, retro, retro play. Play. Pointless work meetings are actually a form of therapy, is what uh, this study says. Mm. We've all done the, like, well, that could have been an email thing, right? <laughs> Which a lot of people are also learning now that they're working from home. They're like, wow, we, a lot of this can just be done through email. Yes, they're saying even though some of those meetings can feel meaningless, they're actually a therapeutic for a lot of people because they offer you... Explain a that to me. They offer you a chance to go into a room and complain about everyone <laughs> and have your, work, your co-workers acknowledge it. Which happens... Oh, not a lot here, but we have like staff meetings and a lot of times it's just us like v telling stories, uh, making fun of people. Okay. Right? It's like a good bonding thing almost. My problem with pointless meetings is, do I want to say this? On Our meetings are usually like way longer because of you. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah, no, that's while, actually a really good point. For a while point, there, we were lock. tracking your talk time during the to start a stopwatch every time you talk. True story. Because I'm a dick, and it's my passive-aggressive nature. <laughs> so I do that to be an a-hole. Right. If we're going to do a pointless meeting, then I'm going to make it really pointless, <laughs> and I'm going to talk for 23 minutes of the 33-minute meeting. Do you, do you, right? Does it feel therapeutic for you to do that? No! <laughs> I know what I'm doing. They found It's premeditated. They found that a lot of managers don't really know what they're doing, <laughs> which is why you end up with a lot of meetings. Because the response to not really knowing what you're doing is to just schedule more meetings. <laughs> and like they're saying a lot of a lot of people spend half their work day just in meetings. Oh my god. <laughs> Some there's somebody driving into work right now that wants to drive into ongoing traffic because of this conversation. Because yep. they know their entire day is gonna be a meeting. <laughs> it's just gonna be them. And if they're working from home, yeah, they'll be on Zoom or Skype with people. And I'm not a meeting guy. Tell me what we need done. Yeah. And I'll go do it. Meetings for the sake of meetings. Not your cup of tea. Drive me insane. I don't. But yeah, no. Apparently, if you're the meeting holder, though, <laughs> evaluate that. Like, why are you doing this? Because it's therapeutic. Like, like I've I've dealt with some managers that a meeting like that justifies their existence. We just said that. I know. I was just. Yeah, re yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's re exaggerating. <laughs> that was. That could have been. Like, what was that word? I have no idea. <laughs> re exaggerating. <laughs> okay. All right. Spell that for me. Ah, uh, locker room retro replay of the day brought to you by Arden Roof Systems. Sign up for the golf tournament. Get a quote from those beautiful people if you're in the Edmonton area, Alberta area, Ardent RoofSystems.com. You know what my favorite meeting was? Was the meeting in radio, and this was a big one. A meeting to plan the meeting. Remember those meetings that you have at work? You'd be like, why are we having a meeting to plan the meeting? Why don't you just send me an email and say, here's the plan? He's like, well, I want input into what we're talking about. Why don't we just do that one meeting where everybody brings his stuff and we just throw it out there and we start talking unorganized. And I remember saying to my boss at the time, his name was Dave. 
I don't want to give his last name. Doesn't matter. Piece of shit. Remember saying to him, "Just start just with an doing, F." Yeah. Are we just do? Are we just doing this so you can you can pretend like you're in, you're in charge? <laughs> like is that why we're doing this? Yes. And he lost his mind. And as soon as he lost his mind, he was done yelling. I went. So it is true. You're doing this to look like you care, and you don't. We're having a meeting to plan the next meeting, and then and it's going to be a brainstorming session. And then he was like, I "That's the other one I love." He, we're the gonna, brainstorming. We're going to brainstorm for a meeting. Isn't that called Whoa. a meeting? <laughs> anyway, so I remember when he he said to me, "It's an attitude like that that will get you kicked out of this meeting." And I'm like, Ooh. "Can I go now?" You don't say. And I got kicked out of the meeting. Oh, anyway, uh, thanks, dude. Good to see you. Yeah. Oh, by the way, uh, Monster Pro Wrestling, Alberta Avenue Community Center. Tickets, you can get them at the door. If you want them in advance and you're Friday. interested in information, you can just send me a note. I'll send you uh, the info on that. Uh, but we're going to be doing that uh, bell at 7 a.m. free or 7 p.m. free parking. And um, the guest list is, is, is over full. So... Please stop sending me requests to get on the guest list. Yeah, what does it cost? Fifteen bucks to go see the show? Nah, it's twenty bucks in advance, twenty five bucks at the door. There you go, twenty five bucks. You're supporting you some guys that are putting on a great show, Monster Pro Wrestling, this Friday. All the details on Lachlan's Twitter feed, and send them an email if you want to get on a list. You're not allowed to be on it anymore. It's no, st st stop promoting the well, list. But you'll tell people where it is. Okay, all right. Yeah, yeah okay. at Lachlan Cross on Twitter. Thanks for doing this, dude. Great to see you. That was a good one. Oh, and uh, thank you to AJ and Sarah from Pioneer Golf Company yeah. for jumping on. They're the title sponsors of the Arden Roof Systems charity golf tournament that is happening in July. So uh, nice to meet them. Very cool story. Dean, go get Thanks, better. Go, yeah, get a nap, go get a nap in. I'm going to. Thanks, yeah. buddy. Lock and Cross. Uh, you can get him on Twitter at Lock and Cross. He's the host of the Locker Room, Locker Room merch page, Locker Room YouTube page as well. Go and subscribe for that. And thanks, everybody. Really appreciate being part of the show. I'm going to get out of here. Maybe some tea. The show is always brought to you by our friends at Cantor. Go to Cantor.com for more information about how you can get unparalleled expertise on industrial torque tools. They make Canada's leading industrial tool experts make it look easy. Sales, service, rentals, calibration, fabrication. They've been making torque wrenches the best in the world out of Edmonton, Alberta, Canada for the last 20 years for heavy industry around the world, nuclear, railroad, steel, forestry. And they're the best in the world at it so much so and so proud of the fact they do it in Canada. They put a maple leaf on every one of their products, which you can check out on their brand new website. Go to cantorque.com today. Uh, torque wrenches, flange systems, tension tools. They make top of the line stuff for custom people that need a custom job for any bolting need, loosening and fastening, saving you time, effort and hassle. They're your one stop shop for all of it. Go to cantorque.com for more information today. Uh, as well, we're brought to you by our friends at Rome.auto. Go to Rome.auto for more details. Rome with Dean is your promo code. Listen, friends, once in a while, a company comes along and they're like, here's an idea. People don't want to buy cars off the lot, lose 20% of their value the second that they turn left or right out of that car lot. And they want to know the complete history of the vehicle. And they don't feel like mitigating it. And they don't want to get into seven-year leases that cost them double the amount the cars. Dude, you don't want to do any of that stuff. You don't want to pay for insurance. You don't want to pay for routine maintenance. You don't want to pay for roadside assistance. should be included in every car you buy. It is now included in the cars you subscribe to. Rome.auto is in the greater Toronto area. They're changing the economy of car buying with a car subscription, insurance, routine maintenance, roadside assistance included, everything except for fuel. There's no lease or interest payments. Simply pay as you go, flexible monthly pants, one month, three months, six months, home delivery and valet service available. Go and browse their cars and check it out. If you're in the market for a new car, you want to test an SUV, you want to test an EV, you want to test a Tesla. You want to test a Kona. You want to test a Ford. It doesn't matter. They have all the cars. And you can subscribe to it for as little as a month. One low interest, no interest payment. Insurance, routine maintenance, everything included. Go to Rome.auto. Rome with Dean is your promo code. By the way, Rome with Dean, that promo code gets you 150 bucks off. It's a great deal. Also, oh, we're not brought to you by the Pope. Wrong slide. Brought to you by our friends over at FactCheck. Go to factcheck.io and check into their brand new software. It's a disinformation killer. F-A-K-T-C-H-E-K.io. If you believe in what you read and you never question anything, don't download this. 
Don't it'll destroy your faith in humanity because it gives you the truth. It gives you the source, the origin epistemology of a tweet or a news story. It tells you who's tweeted what, who said what, where it came from. And the where is as important as the what is as important as the why in disinformation. We give you all of that in a beautiful summary that you can send back to correct the record into social media, wherever you got that lie from, or if you want to correct the record, or if you're just tired of being gaslit and you need a buddy that helps you out on every app that you're on that tells you something that you know is untrue, go to factcheck.io, be part of their disinformation killing beta test team, F-A-K-T-C-H-E-K dot I-O. If you believe that you've been rooked for the past several years with disinformation for mainstream media, podun organizations parading around as news, Telegram in Russia, man oh man, this is your answer. Go to F-A-K-T-C-H-E-K dot I-O, sign up for the beta test today. Going to be launching that program very, very shortly. And as well, we're brought to you by our friends at Muse. Go to Muse Massage Spa for more details on how you... Uh, can get a nice therapeutic massage at the number one massage parlor in the entire city of Toronto, Ontario, Canada, 1290 Finch Avenue West. They got a Toronto deal. All you need to do is hit up Emily or Riley, contact them on their DMs, slide into their DMs, go to their contact at their homepage, musemassagespa.com, send them an email and say, Emily, Dean sent me, Riley, Dean sent me. They're going to give you a unique experience cost-effective unique experience as well fifty dollars off right now uh and don't forget they've got this incredible podcast where they walk you through the world of what it's like to be an advocate for sex workers in the sex work industry to educate you as far as healthy relationships go they're both sexologists smart ladies good human beings spent a lot of time with emily on the phone yesterday as a matter of fact maybe one of the smartest people i know and so accepting of everybody and it doesn't matter where you're from they welcome your kink i believe it's like fetish month or not I think it's like fetish month there. I'm not too sure. Anyway, go to Muse Massage Spa. Find out for yourself. Download their podcast, Muse on the Mic. Patreon, YouTube as well. Have a great day, everybody. Really appreciate you spending time here. And I meant what I said today. Just relax. You don't need to be so angry. Bro, you mad, bro? Don't be so mad anymore. Nothing to be crazy about. I'm not even mad. I'm sick as F. Sick AF. As they say, not that it matters. It's a cold. Been around for generations. I think I'll make it. Bye.